guys thank you so much for clicking so christians actually hosted muslims in the church for their festive celebration so let's check it out ramadan the holy month where muslims fast from dawn till dusk so there's some moroccan tagine there's egyptian rice and there's some lebanese dips as well and for the first time in australia that fast is being broken at an anglican church with muslims and christians sitting side by side the best way to make headway you know when there's a lot of misunderstanding is just to break bread share meal somewhere within every everybody there is something that we share in common we're all part of one one story god of love we seek to live in the light of resurrection amen they're the two biggest religions in the world but despite a shared history spanning almost 1500 years christianity and islam are most remembered for the wars they've fought these two men believe it's time to let it go. All the ancient writings, the revelation of Christ, the whole lot points towards a oneness of humanity. Hmm. It's a completely different story to the us and them that has permeated the world up to now. That either or narrative is retrogressive and uh, destructive. Um, the both end needs to be embraced. I mean, that's where the future is ultimately. Faisal Chotia is a South African-born Indian imam. He first met Peter Humphreys, a rector of St Paul's Church Beaconsfield, six years ago. He's actually better at telling how we met, but Faisal came to the um, rectory one day, the, where I live next to the church, uh, asking if there was a place where the Muslims could hold their Friday prayers. Okay. And um, my response was, well, here. Really? because we were a place of prayer. Wow. Ever since, Muslims working or living in the area have been using the old church, now a community hall, to gather for their most important day of prayer. And the relationship has only grown. Just as the Christian congregation joined the Muslims for Ramadan. The Lord be with you. Some local Muslims will attend Sunday service at St Paul's. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour Jesus Christ. Who by the All of these of perhaps spirit, unorthodox situations to some are embraced by both communities. Sitting here with, with fellow you know, people that believe in God and, and um, pondering over that, well, what a great way to spend a Sunday morning as far as I'm concerned. We are human beings first, you know, doesn't matter what religion, caste or creed or where we come from and what we do, you know, it's very important. I think um, diversity and acceptance of, of that diversity and getting to know other people's religions, backgrounds and, and their perspective is, is what we need more of, especially in this day and age. The next step, a mosque two doors down from the church, but not only for Muslim prayer. A space dedicated to celebrating the uh, richness and the life-giving diversity that is our community, using both Christianity and Islam as a platform. While the idea has been welcomed by most of the community here at St Paul's, not everyone is as approving of the way these two faiths are interacting. The ones that threatened to blow me up, yeah, well, I just passed it off to my friends at Federal Police. We get one or two of those, they're scary. One of them said, I would hate to be you on the Day of Judgment. But despite both men receiving their fair share of hate mail, they say most feedback is positive, and for them, it's about looking ahead. If I want to agree with people and find a common view, then I can turn around and look to the past. Mm. My attitude is, let's look beyond the horizon and seek something common. A sentiment both communities agree with. I'm a very big fan of the work that Father Peter does and um, I love the fact that him and Faisal have such a beautiful friendship. I think they demonstrate um, to the rest of us and the rest of the world actually what two people can achieve when they have leadership and vision. At the moment the world's trying to pull everybody apart rather than bring them together. And this is a small little sign that it can work, I think.
With Father Peter set to leave St Paul soon to focus on his fundraising work in Nepal, there's some trepidation as to who will take his place. But there's also some faith. This has been a relationship evolving not just between individuals but between communities. There's a temptation to stay to see things carry on, but equally there's a trust that this is only a beginning. Mm. And uh, if, if it's got a rightness about it, it will unfold. Um, I'm hearing this or checking this kind of video. Yes, I know of a lot of Muslims that go to church to worship, you know, they go to church to listen to the word of God and do services in church. But the one I have never heard of and is so shocking to me is the one that um the 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 bishop invited the muslims to come and have their prayers in the church like why how what's going on i don't understand i i, I god i'm just speechless guys because they they just finished their festival and they were thinking of where to go and you know pray what happened to monks was the monks occupied was it you know locked up at that point in time or is there no other location they could actually go to and why i don't know they did, well, 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 well. some people say that there's nothing bad in it but it's just sound weird it might not really be bad per se but it's weird because Oh, well, we all believe that we, say we are serving the same God, but at the same time, some people don't agree with the fact that we are serving the same God. Some people will say, no, Christianity has their own God, Islam have their own God. You get it? So you're now inviting them to church to come and pray, and Christians also join them to pray. Ow! Oh, because the way you know, uh, Muslims pray is quite different. They pray in Arabic language, so how are they able to pray with them? If you don't understand the Arabic language or you don't know how to speak it, how do you do that? You know, Christianity is kind of easy because of, you know, English is the common language and most churches speak English. So it's easier for that religion to, you know, adapt or to able to worship in church. But in monks, when you go to monks, you, it's, you look lost because actually if it's not, that's not your faith or that's not your religion. So how were, you, how were they able to join? And you can hear what the man said. It was just like you just wanted um, peace and unity among the two religions. That's why he just thought about that. There's no big deal in them coming to church to pray, to have their prayers. But man, guys, it's weird. It's so weird. If all churches do that, I don't know what to happen to these religions. I don't know. I don't know. I just hope it's not going to happen in any other country because this actually happened in Australia. Just imagine that country also decides to follow this trend. Man, there will be war. There will be war. Like, but it's good per se. It's cool. It's, it's nice, but it's just weird. Like I said, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like, share, and comments. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.